Uh, this is going to be a segment where we talk about specific technical subjects with Dr. Richard Van of Divers Alert Network. Hello, Dr. Van. How are you doing, Joe? Uh, the subject we're going to talk about today is nitrogen narcosis, or inert gas narcosis. Dr. Van, what is that? Well, uh, think of narcosis as an intermediate effect between being fully conscious and being anesthetized in the operating room. Narcosis means that your consciousness is affected, but you're not totally unconscious. And we really don't understand that very well. There's been a lot of research done on it, and still the underlying mechanisms are, are, are not so well understood. So what we'll talk about, I think, now is some of the effects and some of the, the gases that can lead to narcosis. Uh, for example, we think of nitrogen in diving as the, uh, as the most uh, common gas to give us narcosis, and that's correct. And the, the, the rule of thumb is Martini's Law, where every 50 feet of compressed air is uh, approximately equal to, to one martini. Of course, that varies just as uh, the individual tolerance to a martini does. Uh, but nitrogen is not the only gas that, that uh, can lead to narcosis. And in fact, nitrogen is a very weak anesthetic gas, but if you breathe it deep enough, three, four, five hundred feet, you will become unconscious, just as you would be breathing a, 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 a gas that's used for anesthesia like uh, uh, nitrous oxide. But there are other gases that, uh, that cause narcosis, too. Argon, for example, has got a greater potency for, um, for narcosis than does, uh, uh, than does nitrogen. And one thinks of using argon as, a, as a, an insulating gas for a dry suit, and, and that's, that's good, but don't breathe it because uh, you'll, you'll be in, in worse shape than if you're just breathing uh, uh, air. The, the other gas that's a very important with regard to narcosis is carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is narcotic in itself, and if you breathe carbon dioxide up to 10%, you will become unconscious. Where is that important? That's important because during deep diving, and particularly deep diving when there's heavy exercise and when there's uh, a resistance in the breathing equipment, you can retain carbon dioxide, and the carbon dioxide and nitrogen in the breathing gas can uh, add up and, and cause unconsciousness. And this is one of the reasons for what's known as deep water blackout. People just seem to go to sleep, and there's nothing obviously wrong uh, with them. And, and uh, a lot of that has to do with, uh, uh, with the combination of uh, carbon dioxide and nitrogen. Now, to get around that, there's an easy thing to do, and that is substitute helium for the, uh, the nitrogen. And the helium uh, does two things. One, it is not a narcotic gas, and two, it is a lighter weight gas. So consequently, when you breathe it, there's less work you have to put into it. So you, you tend to retain carbon dioxide much less than you would when breathing nitrogen. And we're going to talk about helium as a dive gas in a, uh, another tech time. But I want to get back to something you said about carbon dioxide. Um, and I've experienced this on a, on a wreck where typically like 110 feet, I'm not really, I don't feel that narked. But one time it, there, was, there was an extreme current. I'm swimming against this current. And I got down, and I actually was uh, on the Texas Tower. I was only 90 feet deep. But we were, like, pulling against this really strong current to get down there. By the time I got down there, I felt narked out of my mind. That's exactly what can happen, and that is the combination of carbon dioxide and nitrogen. And divers frequently aren't, aren't aware of this, and that's one of the, the hazards about having to do work deep when you're breathing uh, nitrogen uh, and, and oxygen, breathing air, in, in fact. So uh, it's, it's really a good idea to try to maintain as low a work effort as you possibly can when you're, when you're diving deep on air. Okay. And in summary, so we, we know pretty much the effects of nitrogen narcosis, but is there any hypothesis of what actually causes this in the body physiologically? Yes, there is. And it's uh, one of the earlier hypotheses that, that seemed to make uh, sense, and actually it was related to uh, uh, some uh, uh, observations, was that the narcotic potency of a gas was determined or was associated with the uh, solubility of that gas in, in fat. And so, for example, carbon dioxide is very, very soluble, whereas helium is very insoluble. And the, the other gases, uh, the noble gases, uh, neon, uh, nitrogen, uh, argon, 
uh, and xenon, for example, all are related by their, their solubility in fat. Xenon, in fact, is, a, is used as an anesthetic uh, in, in Europe in some places because it is, is so narcotic. Uh, uh, helium is the least narcotic. Uh, then neon is, is next in the narcotic potency. Uh, hydrogen, in, interestingly enough, does have some narcotic potency. And what you can do, and, uh, and we'll talk about this a little later when we're talking about uh, uh, helium, you can actually use narcotic potency against the effect of uh, very high pressure to uh, give you a, a better breathing gas. But that's a subject for, uh, for later on. Um, will that subject, uh, when we talk about HPNS, would that uh, come into that? Yes, it is. Okay. So anyway, Dr. Van, thank you so much for um, informing us about nitrogen narcosis. Appreciate it. Thank you. Glad to do it. <laughs>